I know many in the U.S. Uh, feel Starbucks is espresso, uh, but there's an old world rich coffee where the beans are magically roasted uh, using wood and blended to bring forth uh, a rich caramelly taste that simply begs for milk and a little bit of sweetness, becoming its own dessert. Now you can call me old fashioned, but this is the coffee my Italian friends, parents would give me when I visited their Chicago area homes as a kid. Uh, to me, it's comfort coffee. When I met uh, Luigi Di Riocco at Mr. Espresso, whose father, Carlo, developed his own wood-burning roaster, I knew I'd found uh, an, a wonderful espresso at the intersection of old and new. It's not just old, you know, the older style. It is the older style, in a sense, the classic rich espresso, but there's also something new about it because they follow all the specialty, you know, standards. You know, not all the old uh, uh, coffee places. Uh, they didn't necessarily use specialty coffee. They didn't use special coffee at all. In fact, um, but uh, like I said, Mister Espresso really is has the uh, is at the intersection, and uh, to me, in a perfect way. I've been asking uh, Luigi to present the best way to make espresso at home and Luigi has kindly consented to share a few secrets with us at Coffee Con today. Uh, we're now headed to Mr. Espresso in Oakland. Luigi? <laughs> uh, Luigi, are you, uh, are you with us? I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. I can. can yes, good to good. see you. I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to hand off to you and good then to I'll... Hear, good to hear you. Uh, 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 it is great to hear you as well. And uh, wow, yeah. looks like you got some great... Gr those are green coffee sacks in the background, aren't they? <laughs> they are. You got a lot of them. Well, good. Well, let's help. Uh, maybe uh, everyone should order a little coffee from you so that we can help bring those... Down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we need anyway. to roast this coffee over here, so yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> I, I, I want to. I've been. Uh, I've been really excited about this because I want to find out. You've been promising to tell me how to make espresso, so now I brought along a few of my friends. <laughs> so I'm gonna just let you deliver uh, the t two of you, and then I will. Um, I will hold questions for the end. And uh, but uh, thank you for being here today. <clears throat> Okay. And feel free to interject any questions as we go to. We're comfortable with Okay. That. Okay. Well, um, should I? Ready? Yeah. Okay. You're oh, sure. so as uh, Kevin, Kevin said, my name is Luigi DiRocco. I'm from Mr. Espresso, and here is Eric Lewis, solution specialist with Mr. Espresso as well. Um, my family owns and operates um, our company out of Oakland, California. Uh, my father founded the company in 1978. He's an Italian immigrant, and uh, when he first started the company, his goal was to help introduce authentic Italian espresso to this country. It opened in the, in the mid-'70s, so at that time, espresso was still very, um, was largely unknown, and, um, and so he saw an opportunity to try and bring a part of his culture to this country. And so today, there's two generations of our family working together here every day to help ensure that his legacy continues. And as Kevin mentioned, part of what our, our goal is to do is to, is to perpetuate and maintain relevance for classic Italian-style espresso, but through the lens of contemporary and specialty coffee uh, that we all know and love. Um, so, uh, as Kevin also said, we are here to talk about, how to, about home espresso. Uh, we're not here to show you how to make espresso per se. Um, we figured that since you're here already and you're watching Coffee Con and you're watching a, um, a course on, es on espresso, you most likely already have, or at least we hope you already have, uh, an espresso machine at home. And uh, we probably are making the assumption that you've been uh, comfortable making espresso shots with that machine and are getting pretty decent quality shots. Our goal here today is, is to help you make better espresso at home help you dial in your home espresso to a higher level. Um, again, putting ourselves in the, in the shoe of the potential viewer, thinking that if you have a machine at home, 
you got your good, you got your high quality home equipment set up and everything, and you got coffee from your favorite local roaster or whoever that may be, but and you might be getting pretty good results, but you're maybe not 100% sure if what you're getting is as good as it can be or is as good as the roaster intended and so on. So that's what we're here for today. Um, our, ultimately, we want to help try and save you guys from some of the guesswork, the trial and error, the research that many of us have had to do in the industry and at home to arrive at what works well for making home espresso. Um, but we're hoping from some of the things we covered today in our course, uh, we can save you a little time in the process. So, um, a few things you need, which will be of great assistance. I'm gonna point here with my right hand now because my left hand's a little banged up. Uh, a few things that you'll need for your home espresso setup that are gonna help you um, accomplish what we're talking about today, make it much easier, and they're, they're fairly essential. This may not be a comprehensive list of all the things you could have at home to make great espresso, but this is a good starting kit. So um, obviously you're gonna need a quality espresso machine. Um, I'm not going to go through an exhaustive list of what that means, but you're obviously going to need a machine that can deliver a, a pump pressure of eight to nine bars consistently, uh, have a reasonable level of temperature stability, a high quality professional uh, portafilter and basket. Um, again, there's, there's more, but that's a good start. Um, by the same token, you're going to need a burr grinder, a good burr grinder that's designed for making espresso that can grind fine enough for espresso without overheating. And it has the ability also to make small micro adjustments when you're dialing in your grind, you can have more um, manipulation available. Um, good water, uh, that's quite a rabbit hole right there. I'm gonna try and avoid tactfully, but use a good quality water, free of taste and odor, um, free of minerals and, and, and things that are, would be qualified as hard water as much as possible, however, you do want a, a small quantity of that stuff in your water. Uh, SEA standards are great things to refer to for the exact specifics on what that entails. Uh, you, you need a timer. You can use your phone to a timer, regular timer, it doesn't matter. Um, tamper, um, tamper with good weight, allow you to, cons uh, to achieve a nice consistent tamp. Um, most importantly, the tamper should be of the same diameter as your portafilter basket. So if you have a 58 millimeter portafilter basket, you need a 58 millimeter tamper. Um, a gram scale, um, pretty important that your gram scale weighs to the nearest tenth of a gram. You don't want a gram scale that goes from like 17 grams to 18 grams to 19 grams. You want something that weighs out to the nearest tenth. So 17.1, 17.2, dosing cup. Um, we have one of these today. It can be virtually anything, just something that you can dispense your coffee grounds into and weigh. That beautiful paper cup will work too. Um, fresh coffee beans, kind of a loaded subject, but make sure they're, they're fresh. But here's the caveat, not too fresh. Um, your coffee beans for espresso do need to degas. I would talk to your roaster and see what they recommend. And these beans should be shipped to you in, um, in a way that they're able to preserve the freshness from the day that they were roasted. Helps if they're packaged uh, in high quality packaging or otherwise you want to have them soon enough after the roast date so that they don't, they don't have a chance to um, oxidize and stale. And then a clean machine. If you have a home machine, you know what your daily cleaning regimen should be. Stick to it, have a clean machine, have a clean grinder, keep all your equipment clean, okay? So once you have all these things, more or less in place. Uh, you should be ready to rock and, um, and capable of making or taking your espresso game up to the next level. Um, so as you see here next on the, on the board is um, espresso recipe. Question mark, question mark. Uh, what is that? <laughs> well, as with anything else, um, there's, you know, when you cook food, um, coffee is part of that uh, category. It helps to follow a recipe. Um, the flavor of an espresso in the cup is determined by how much coffee you use, how much water you use, how long the water is in contact with the coffee, and the temperature at which it's being extracted from the espresso. So that's not an exhaustive list once again, but those are four really important things 
that most of the time you can manipulate yourself at home. It used to be that everyone followed an Italian recipe because espresso was, having been invented in Italy, was the only place to look for the rules of making espresso. Over the years, however, things have evolved and there are now many different formulas or recipes for making espresso depending on where you look, who you ask, and et cetera. Um, now, we haven't mentioned a few minutes ago that referring to your roaster from where you purchase your beans is a great resource, not only for uh, determining the freshness of the beans, how long ago they were roasted, what kind of packaging they're using, and the shelf life. Um, your roaster is also a great resource to go to and ask what their recommended recipe is. We highly recommend that you do this. Um, we want to help you arrive at enjoying the coffee first and foremost in the way that the roaster intended. So we're gonna trust that the roaster that you're buying your beans from has a bit of an idea of how their coffee should taste after preparing it through an espresso machine. And they can provide you with the specs or the details that you need to make a great, great espresso using their beans. Um, a good example is if you uh, have a favorite dish from your favorite restaurant, I mean, wouldn't you want to ask the chef how they made that dish? So I would probably want to follow their recipe. Now, once you got that down, I would say that you could feel free afterwards, for example, with a, your espresso recipe, you can then branch out and experiment with your own recipe and, and vary it and try some different things out. But I would, we would always highly recommend to start off with the roaster's recipe. Okay, so it's gonna save you a lot of time, trial and error, experimentation, and being that you're at home and you're buying coffee in smaller quantities, you may not wanna burn through all those beans. Also, every time you buy new beans from a new roaster, you don't wanna to have to start this process of trial and error all over again. You may want to, and it can be a lot of fun, and you can learn a lot from it, but you may very well not want to do that either. So once you've ordered your beans from your roaster, reach out to them and ask for the recipe. So the components of a recipe in the most simple form are coffee in, coffee out, extraction time, and temperature. Um, how much coffee are you using? How much water are you using? How much time is it extracting from the espresso machine? And what is the temperature of the water not of the boiler inside of the machine, what is the temperature of the water passing through the coffee grounds? Okay. Uh, we use a scale to measure the coffee in or the, the dry weight of the ground coffee. Um, we also use a scale to measure the wet weight or the extracted yield of the coffee. Uh, timer for the time. Temperature can be measured. Uh, on a home machine, you're probably not gonna have a sophisticated thermometer that professionals use, so you'll be relying on whether or not your home machine allows you to the adjust the temperature on the machine. You may not have this feature, but you very well may have this feature. If you do, then great. If you don't have the ability to adjust temperature on your machine, then you're just not going to have to worry about this for the moment. Okay. And then on the next column, our recipe, um, we have today in our hopper and we'll be pulling shots of this particular blend, our, our uh, Mr. Espresso's Tuscan blend espresso, according to the recipe that we've worked out from our own process of trial and error through the years, and for what we know gets us the best results with this particular coffee. So as an example, uh, we'll be using 18 to 19 grams of ground coffee. Um, we'll be targeting a wet, or liquid yield of 30 to 35 grams of espresso out of the portafilter. Uh, we'll be targeting an extraction time of 28 to 30 seconds. And our machine <coughs> is set for 206, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, our temperatures are a little higher than many people are used to. Just trust us on that. <laughs> uh, but uh, we found that uh, depending, depending on the type of machine that you're using also, the range for this coffee can be between 205 to 208. Um, so uh, there, the next step here for us is to um, demonstrate how this works. And we're going to illustrate this through an example of 
walking up to your machine at home or your grinder and the beans are just being loaded in like we just did and going through the process of taking this grinder from not being calibrated to calibrated and fully dialed in according to these specs. Okay, I so just I'm lost my call. I'm going to um, <laughs> turn over the uh, mic to Eric here. I just lost my call. So Who call just you. lost his call? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can hear me, though, I believe, us. on my microphone. Yeah. So, um, uh, well. so Luigi laid out the idea of a recipe. Um, every roaster is going to have a very specific way that they pull a shot in their cafes or with their clients. Um, so it's very common to have a set recipe. Um, some of them even put it on the bag. They put it on their websites. Um, and uh, so it's pretty easy to get. Um, maintaining a recipe in a cafe is really easy because um, you're, you're pulling 20, 200 shots a day, 100 shots a day, one after another. Your coffee's pretty easy to control the freshness uh, because you're going through it so quickly. Making espresso at home is challenging partially because you're only going to make a couple and you don't want to waste a lot of uh, coffee. So um, what we recommend is using a scale and a cup. Um, and very carefully weighing out and controlling all those variables and only manipulating your grind. Um, of course, the tough part about that is your coffee is going to change every time you get a new batch from your roaster if it's been in your cabinet for a week. So you're really every day kind of dialing in a little bit. Um, and if you have all these measurements ahead of time, you can manipulate them for your next shot. So if you were just to simply make a shot and find out that it was a little off, you can take that, you know, that amount of coffee, manipulate it a little bit, or the grind, and kind of know where you're starting from to move it. So we're going to do that. We're going to, we have a grinder that's a little out of calibration, um, and we're going to basically dial it in and walk you through dialing in in a very controlled way so that we're not wasting a lot of coffee. Um, so I'm going to start by weighing out a dose of coffee. I do have a scale for weighing that. You don't need a really fancy scale. Little gram scale like this costs you $15 online. Um, does one tenth of a gram. Uh, very inexpensive, and you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, doesn't have to be waterproof. Most of the time, it doesn't even get that wet. So, um, so I'm going to dose out 18 and a half grams right in the middle of that recipe there. And I usually set my grinder when I'm using a scale to actually put out more coffee than I need. So whether you're doing it manually or with a timed function. Um, so I'll take that excess and just put it at my target weight. So I'm not worried about, in this case, the on-demand grinder being set to an exact amount because I'm going to manipulate it manually. So. One of the nice features of this little dosing cup is it mates with the portafilter really well. So everything really consistent with your tamping and everything else, just like you would normally do. And I'm going to pull these shots into a glass today just because obviously that way you guys can see them. That way you guys can see that as well. And a timer. All right. So I'm going to pull this shot. I believe this is set a little coarse. That's how I left it. Um, so this will happen, obviously, if your coffee's getting a little bit older. It'll start to speed up. Um, maybe I have a brand new coffee that I've shifted to. So it's going really fast. So I'm at about, probably at about 11 seconds, I was at my 35, sec uh, 35 gram uh, shot volume. So what I'm going to do is fine up my grind. Now, I think it's really important not to go too far, too fast, um, because you'll end up basically going back and forth yo-yoing, um, and you use a lot of coffee. So it'll get easier as you get to know your grinder. But in this one, for instance, I'm going to probably shift it about one full number on there. Um, and very, very important step here is that I have to purge. Every time I adjust my grind, I have to actually throw coffee away or use it in some other way. So I'm going to purge this out by using, depending on the size of your grinder, maybe a double shot worth of coffee so that I know I'm clearing the grinding chamber and clearing out the chute.
This is something that a lot of people forget. So, make sure still turn. All right. So, once again, I'm going to weigh this out to 18 and a half grams. I'm going to run a shot. I'm going to see how quickly it, it runs. So, I'm trying to hit that roughly about 29 second target. So same thing again, load this up. I like to groom my coffee, level it out as much as I can. On this particular machine, you notice I'm doing a flush every time. I like to flush these for about one to two seconds beforehand on an E61. Um, so. Now, of course, you don't have to weigh under here. You can do it off to the side, tear your cup like I'm doing with the drip coffee. So you don't necessarily have to put it directly under there. Um, so I've reset my timer. You know, even in the field visiting um, clients and, and working with people at shows, another thing, we always, we always end up using a, a scale and a timer like this to try to dial things in. It just makes things so much faster. So there I hit about 15 seconds um, and I got close to my target weight right in the middle between, well, a little high, 37. So I'll try to cut that a little earlier. So we're going to slow this down one more time and hopefully hit my target. I have a good feeling you will. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> the coffee's been eluding me this morning. So. Um, so one of the things that happens when you start getting your, uh, your extraction to slow down like this and get into a range, um, and what we're really looking for especially, is you start uh, getting darker kind of caramel tones and sweet tones that start to balance out some of the bitters and the sours in the coffee. Um, and every coffee is going to be diff different and unique in that way. Um, and there's no perfect expression of this, but um, for this coffee in particular, those numbers will get us to that ideal flavor. Um, but the coffee will start getting a little darker as we slow it down. You've probably seen that. The crema tends to be um, a little denser, more packed, and not as airy. And so you may be noticing that on these shots as well as they're pouring out. So. You know what I can't remember if I purged. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to do that one more time, just because if I didn't purge, we're going to be running the old ground. And that'll be a waste of our time. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. And actually, so that's important. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, don't waste your time. Just throw it away and move on. Grab another one. Um, you know, you don't want to do this all the time because it is a little bit of a waste, especially when you're paying $20 for a bag of really nice specialty coffee. Um, but it's important to do that to kind of get that enjoyment out of it, get to know the coffee. All right. So let's see, maybe we'll get there now. A little flush. Put this guy on, and here we go. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> so this is a good sign that I didn't see those first drips until about five seconds. It's definitely slowing way down. Um, crema's getting a little thicker there. Let's see. Might be just a little fast still given where we're at, but I'm going to try to land right about there. So a little bit fast. We hit about 25 seconds. We're trying to get up to about 28. So, but I am very, very close to that target point here. Um, so the crema is not quite as bubbly and not rising as much. Um, and I'm really getting to that point where I'm kind of using up every last bit of the good, good juices of that espresso, giving me a really nice uh, uh, flavor profile. Um, should we dial in one more time here? 
No, I think that that's um, good. Let's be sensitive to the time we yeah. have allowed here. Um, I think the idea here is we got it pretty close after three adjustments, and one smaller additional adjustment will probably land us right perfectly in that sweet spot. So I think from here, we um, can probably pull off of that. And right. So. Yeah, yeah. And um, once you have your, your espresso dialed in per the spec and you had a chance to drink it and, and enjoy it, now you can give a really fair representation of that coffee and, and see what you truly think of it. Uh, there is wiggle room now. For example, since he was using 18 and a half grams to pull a shot to try and land in that window, if you want to pull a denser, more syrupy, sweeter shot, you could just updose a little bit, try it at 19 grams, try it at 19 and a half grams without adjusting the grind and you'll basically restrict the flow of the water, creating a shorter shot, and you, you can observe the differences and see if you like that better. Conversely, you could even use less coffee and go with 18 grams instead of 18 and a half. It'll speed the flow of the water up. And it'll give you a coffee flavor with more dilute flavor, but it might have a broader range of flavors, and it'll also yield more um, liquid volume in the cup, too, if you want something more to sip on. Um, so that concludes the demonstration part of that and also the, um, the course on how to dial in your espresso at home. Uh, appreciate your time. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much and happy to answer any questions. All right. Uh, nice. Thank you, uh, Luigi. Are we we are, uh, we're running a little low on time here. Let me see if I've got anything that needs... Just uh, the usual, I have one question that I really want to throw out to you because I did yes. find I have a little bit of this left, this Ethiopian that's, that I got from Mr. Espresso. Uh, it's a natural, and I want to point out, I, I use a lot of Mr. Espresso uh, coffees in my uh, pour-overs as well, my uh, manual pour-overs uh, in Oakland. And uh, But Fenn in Brooklyn said, please describe why wood roasting is better or different. And... Uh, Luigi, are you able to hear yeah, that question? Yeah. Okay. Well, we are going to uh, save that question. I, it's already posted somewhere, and I'll uh, I'll tell uh, Mr. Espresso uh, later. And thank you, guys. And uh, here we go.